This is the last course in the series where we show you how to build your first workflow in ClickUp. In this course, what we're going to do is walk step by step through the workflow that we just created. Going back to my ClickUp workspace, you can see that we're starting in the incoming request list. Again, this is going to be that list that you've set up that's separate from the work that's currently in flight, and you're using this for your intake process. So all of your new work is going to be landing in this incoming request list. And as a part of this list, we've added this content request form. And I've actually already got a pre-filled form here that we're going to go through together. So if somebody wanted to submit work for our team, they might find this form and then submit it. And you can see they would include things like who they are, the priority of this work, the title of the project, the primary goal for the project, a description, the target audience, the target channel, any mock-ups and inspiration, and then a potential due date. And so once they hit submit, that's actually going to generate a task right on that incoming request list. And here you can see it. It's the AI landing page task that was submitted by my teammate, Alicia. Once these new projects land inside my intake process, I'm going to want to triage the project and make any updates to the fields that are going to help me in prioritizing and then kicking off the project. The custom fields that you see on this list are slightly different from the ones that were in the form. So I've got fields that I'm using in the form for people who are submitting, and I've got fields that I'm using as part of my triage process. So here you can see a few fields that we don't have filled yet. We've got the assignee field. It uh, looks like Alicia didn't put a due date on here. We've got the time estimate field. And then going across here, we've got the marketing task type. Now, it doesn't matter what type of work you're doing. It could be operations. It could be HR. You can actually apply the same workflow to any use case. So going back, maybe we don't have a due date yet. And so I've also added a comment field here. And from this comment field, I can just add, mention my team member and say, do you know when you need this by now? And she might respond and say something like a week from now. And so I can go ahead and update the field and maybe I can even update the priority. So looking at the task now, it looks like we've got most of the information that we need. There might be a few more things that I wanna update, like the time estimate and the marketing task type. And now that this task or project is ready and I feel like we're ready to prioritize it, my final step is going to be to actually use our statuses on the left-hand side here and update the status from new to in progress. And if you recall from our previous courses, we've already got our automations in place that are going to automatically assign this task to the team member that's responsible for website design. And it's also going to apply any templates that we want to use for website design. If I go to my automations here, you can see as an example, let's go ahead and edit this automation so you can see the details. Once the task is moved to in progress, and it's got the marketing task type of website. It's going to change the assignee to the person on our team who's responsible for web design. It's also going to then add this task to the website list, and it's going to apply. Let's update this. The landing page template. So I'm going to go ahead and click Save here. We can close out the automation dialog. And again, once I go ahead and move this to in progress, we'll still have one copy of the task here in my incoming request list that we can work from. You can see that the assignee was just updated. And then a copy of this task is also going to be added to our website list. So if I click on websites here, you'll see you can find this AI landing page. Now, just be aware because we added it to this list, not moved it to the list, but we added it to this list. So it's currently pulling the status from the original list that we were working from. So it's pulling the status from the incoming request list. To show you that in more detail, if I click on the task at the top, you've got the breadcrumbs. 
So here you can see that it's on both the incoming request list and the website list. And you'll notice that we do have this little home icon. So if I wanted to change where this task was based, I could update this to the website list as the task's home and then have it be in my incoming request list as its secondary list. So let's actually just do that to show you what that looks like. And let's just say that, that this project is going to be marked as in development. Let's go ahead and hit done. And so now, just to show you what we've changed, this task still lives in both lists, but it's been added to the in development status set here. It's using the status set from this website development list. And if I go to the incoming request list, you'll see that now this status has been added here as a way for me to see the status that this particular project is in. The reason that I'm showing you this is to actually highlight why it's so important to keep your statuses as simple as possible and as homogenous as possible so that when you are moving projects across different teams, you don't have to deal with changing the statuses because that could potentially cause confusion. Just to walk through this workflow one more time, we've added this task to our incoming request list using the form. So a team member submitted the form, that form generated a task. We triaged that task. We updated any custom fields that were relevant. We prioritized that task and marked it as in progress or in flight. Once we marked that task in progress or in flight, that kicked off the automations that we set up and those automations included adding that task to a different list and also applying a template to that task and updating the assignee. And that's really how you build a workflow. You put together these key features, which are your forms for intake. We're using automations to increase our efficiency and make sure that we're able to scale our work. And then finally, we're incorporating templates in order to better standardize our work and create consistency across our different projects. So thanks again for watching. Again, as mentioned, this was a step-by-step -step review of the workflow that we built. We talked through forms, we talked through automations, we talked through templates. We've also got a follow-up activity that you can check out as well as links to our courses on views. Thanks for joining.